You ready? You're listening to The Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Hunter here. Hope you're hoping a great night, weekend, whenever you're checking this out. I've got our first review in the Real Spooky series uh, for this year for the first Scream movie, which I actually just watched for the first time last week, uh, in large part because of my incredible guest. Uh, I have known this young gentleman since, oh God, I'm going to I'm gonna date myself, uh, at least 20 years, which is Oh God, I'm getting old. But he is a he is an avid movie watcher, a pro wrestling fanatic, a scream fanatic, generous lover, I'd imagine. I uh, got my friend Buck here. Buck, how you doing, sir? Oh, hey! Thank you so much for having me on. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> well, well, thank thanks for being on, man. Uh, um, well, the the second you told me you wanted to watch these movies and have me review it. I was set. Time and place, and I I am, just tell me the time and place, and I would be ready to do this. So I'm really happy you're on, because, uh, so to I'll, I know you have way more uh, to say about where you your love from these films comes from, but I will simply say, I've seen the first two, we're reviewing Scream, just, uh, uh, just the first one tonight, but I had never seen these. And this is always that movie I would pass by when Hollywood Video was still a thing. And I'd go like, man, I should watch that at some point. And then go, eh, let's rent a, I don't know. If, I don't know if the fuck I'll throw God, that, that. Anyway, so like, I'll throw it. Tang. Sure. Yeah. renting Pootie Tang. Yeah, hey, Pootie Tang's great. <laughs> but, but yeah, back in the Hollywood Video days, I wouldn't always walk past and I'd see all the screen movies. I'd go, man, I should probably watch those, those at some point. And, you know, Wes Craven has done a lot of shit I like just going through his filmography. It's like, God damn. He, like, so I think Red Eye is criminally underrated. I fucking adore Red Eye. I think that movie kicks ass. I don't think enough people talk about that film enough. I will defend Vampire Brooklyn. I think Vampire in Brooklyn is great. <laughs> it's dumb. I don't care. I think it's wonderful. But then he also did, um, of course, he did the Nightmare, on, uh, most of the Nightmare on uh, Elm Street movies. I know that's where most people... <laughs> The good ones. Uh, yeah, there, there's been a lot of those. I was like kind of looking through. I was like, yeah, there's been quite a few of those. Um, of course, he was also in Jade Silent Bob Strike Back, which is his best work, obviously. <laughs> obviously. But, <laughs> but, you know, Wes Craven's a talented motherfucker. And when you think about where the horror franchise is now, when you think about, like, uh, you know, outputs from, I mean, Blumhouse is probably the standard at this point. Um, and Blumhouse puts out some incredible shit. Um, Hollywood Ends is not included in that, but, <laughs> but Blumhouse puts out a lot of good shit. And oh, when you think, I, oh, sorry, I no, 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 good, good. I will say horror films would not be where they're at today if it wasn't for the screen movies. And that's exactly where I was leading. Like Blumhouse and like A twenty four with a lot of their horror and like Neon, all all those indie companies that I will admit I am a huge mark for <laughs> for all three of those companies, but. To see what to see the influences that Scream has clearly had on horror after watching the first two, it's like, oh, I get now why people are always going this like was a shot of adrenaline that the horror franchise uh, that the horror genre needed in you know the mid '90s. Because I, and I was talking to my friend about this off mic, and I and, and I think we can kind of have this discussion about it. As much as I loved in comic book movies and. If you listen to the podcast, you know I do. But there is no genre that hits for me when it's done correctly, like horror and sci-fi do. Like when you get a great horror movie, like I just watched uh, X, which I have not uploaded that review, but X kicks so much ass. But when you get a great horror movie and you go, oh my God, this is how you fucking do this shit. Like, thank you for not fucking this up. But then, you know, when you get a bad horror movie... It's it just, you know, it makes you want to curl up in a ball and wonder why you even support the genre in the first place. So, well, well, that depends because there are so many bad horror movies that are worth watching because they're hilarious. But I will agree if done correctly, uh, a horror film 
There is nothing like a good horror film that just catches you if it's done correctly. And Scream, it isn't the first horror movie I ever saw, but it is one that resonated. To, like, I still remember what house I was in, what room I was in. I remember it just resonated with me that much. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's crazy because I forgot that Craven did. The first thing he did was Last House on the Left, which is... An insane debut when you think about it. I mean, that's a movie I think people are just uncomfortable watching, and I, and, and I get why, but you want to talk about some people who absolutely deserved all the smoke that they got? Holy shit, that is one of those movies where you go, oh man, this is... I mean, to, to start your career with Last House on the Left and The Hills Have Eyes, that's kind of fucking awesome, honestly, <laughs> so... I, yeah, I, the mo- horror movies that absolutely make my screen call... Uh, skin crawl are ones where people break into people's houses and torture them like i can't watch those like those just get to me because of how realistic those can be yeah that that's why i personally stay away from uh from supernatural horror like if if a tv starts floating or something i'm like yep fuck this like i (laughs) i i I, I can't do shit like that i want to get but getting in the screen so (laughs) It was really fun because as I was watching these movies, I was kind of like, I was basically like live chatting you or uh, uh, Facebook messaging you, like my reactions in real time. And mm-hmm. one thing I have to just get out of the way that is really funny to me is that the scary movie franchise fucked with me for the initial opening <laughs> of this movie because I've seen scary movie so many times and how they do the whole. The whole parody of Casey getting killed, but it's um oh what's her name Carmen Electra I think yes Carmen yeah Electra. but it's Carmen Electra in uh, in scary movie you know getting killed and you know her her implant gets stabbed that was actually really funny but but it's to watch the actual version of what's being spoofed there's nothing funny about this shit at all <laughs> like, it was like oh no this is no. That opening scene is straight up freaking horrifying. There was yeah. there there was no element of even though the screen movie has uh elements of humor in it, there is nothing humorous about that first scene. Yeah, it's really it's really disturbing. So you know, we we open up with uh, Drew Barrymore. It, it's crazy to see how like I think most of the people in the in in these movies have aged. Uh, really well uh matthew lillard uh especially and we'll we'll get to the other people but but to see drew barrymore you know blonde drew barrymore which is just kind of a trip uh, but to see her you know just hanging out answers her phone of course we know who's on the phone you know it's, it's ghost face but i love how it goes from kind of you know oh you know you never told me your name because i want to know who i'm looking at like that like which is a dick move, by the way, on the part of Ghostface, <laughs> just, just to drag this shit out. Because unfortunately, the movie does a really, and not even unfortunately, but the film does a really good job of making you think that she actually might get away. And she's as close to getting away as you could get to getting away with mm-hmm. not getting away. And that in particular, the way that scene is complete is framed yeah, that, t- that tugs at your heart a little. It really does, because she's so close to her parents. You're like, oh my gosh, she's good. Like, they're going to recognize her. They're going to hear her voice, and she'll be okay. And no, nah, the movie just snatches that hope away from me, and you go, oh, well, fuck. Okay. One so, thing I... Sorry. Oh, good. No, no, you're good. Good. So, first little uh, little tidbit about this movie, going going back to screen, uh, Scary Movie. Scream's original uh, title was Scary Movie. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> they changed it to Scream by the time they released the movie. That's really f- Oh, that's ironic. Okay. I love that. <laughs> so I know you said that, you know, this wasn't like your first scary, you know, scary movie, but this is one of the first ones that really, you know, stuck with you. Uh, for me, it would be Sounds of the Lambs when I was five. I saw that, which I had no reason to be watching that shit when I was five. <laughs> but, but that movie in particular stuck with me. I was so happy after watching this because I've had movies like Napoleon Dynamite is one that immediately comes to mind where I've had it quoted at me so much or it's been referenced so much around me that by the time I finally got around to watching it, I was like, yeah, all right. Like, you know, cool people like this. It's just not for me. I, when I was done watching this, I was like, I'm so happy I watched this. Like, because there's nothing worse to feel like my time is wasted watching a movie and just going like, I'll show you. I'm going to give you a little grade. But, but, (laughs) 
but watch this the whole time and we'll we'll kind of jump we're gonna jump around here people because scream but uh nev campbell so first off nev campbell can still get it i i fucking love nev campbell i think he's <laughs> i think she's fucking um amazing i think she i think is the best final girl in horror cinema by the way you, you really you like you'd say some more more so than uh than her and jamie lee curtis definitely okay. the top two i was gonna say i feel like it's those two and then everybody else but um but i was so happy to see her in this and again she's i mean she's aged wonderfully but you think about i remember loving her from party of five like i like again to date myself here but i loved her so much on that show that i was so happy to see that she continued to do the do the scream stuff and party party of five i've never seen it i i don't believe i, I was out having a life i got that that's rude <laughs> but i i love her in this and the thing that's so depressing about this movie is that she's very much trying to tell people that bad shit is going on and everyone's kind of just very lackadaisical. Not not everyone, but a lot of people are just kind of lackadaisical about it. Like, oh, come on. It's only a couple people have been killed, which even saying that out loud should be, you know, an immediate red flag. Back. But yeah, it was the 90s. It was a different time. <laughs> right. But, but when you find out what happened, because I didn't know. So when I say I didn't know anything about the screen movies, I I don't know who any of the killers. I didn't know who any of the killers were up until the fourth movie, and someone randomly spoiled it for me the other day, which I was just like, "Thank you, like, goddamn it!" Oh but, no, they revealed the fourth kill, the yeah, number four. Yeah, Fourth's how, actually, re- I loved how they did the killer for four. No yeah, spoilers for it, but four, yeah, I thought I was, four was epic. Yeah, I wasn't thrilled here. I was like, gosh, dang it. But I didn't know who the killers were in this one. I didn't know who the killer was in two. I was like, I mean, I guessed. I guessed the one in two. I did guess the ones here. But the thing is, it's not. that's not the point. The The point is how you get there. And the journey for this movie between oh, yeah. S- between Sydney and her, uh, her uh, boyfriend, Billy, who's played by a Skeet, Skeet er- Ehrlich, with that guy. Oh, is Ulrich. it Ulrich? God, Ulrich. That's, a, that's, a, that's a porn sounding name. <laughs> <Ulrich. Like, laughs> so he immediately. Poor, man, get, poor man's Johnny Depp. I, oh, I mean, well, I would say if he hadn't sued, he'd be the, just Johnny Depp. But I guess, you're, I guess you're right there. But but Billy immediately was giving me those vibes of someone who'd go like. It, it maybe it's because I've been watching a lot of that 70s show, but it's like, oh, here's a purity ring. You, you know what I mean? And he'd be like fucking girls like in the bat in like bathrooms and shit like <laughs> like while you're like when you're out of town or so like he just seemed like such a piece of shit pretty <clears throat> pretty much from early on and i think the movie does a good job though of throwing you off the scent of him just enough so that you're always questioning it because there are points where you're kind of going huh maybe he actually does give a shit about her and does actually care but from that opening scene of him being like you know, basically being like, you know how we could really express our love, baby. (laughs) (laughs) And I I will say the one complaint before I throw it back to you that that I really have about this movie, the cover (laughs) of Don't Fear the Reaper by Blue Oyster Cult, while he's trying to fuck Nev Campbell, my brain could not handle it. I was just (laughs) like, like, I was, my skin was crawling in not a good way. I was like, oh, I don't like this at all. (laughs) So, I love the cover just because I associate it with the movie and the movie just has always been such a big part of my life. But I can understand someone listening to it as an adult being like, this isn't good. What, What I will also say is them doing a cover of Don't Fear the Reaper is uh, a real big red herring for he's the killer. If you like know the subtext of Don't fear the that's Reaper, that's a fair point dark messed up song yeah that's a that's a really good point yeah like uh, the the movie is chock full of red earrings and that's kind of when i saw it i think i was like nine or ten the first time i saw it so like you don't know what to look for that kind of thing when you're a kid but yeah, like as i grew older and watched all the movies and rewatched all the movies over and over just the little things you look for while trying to think who the killer is and uh without jumping too far ahead 
uh, Billy being the killer, it seemed too obvious because of how creepy and serious they made him. But them doing the twist where there were two killers, uh, at, during that time, like, no one thought there was going to be two killers. Like, you couldn't wrap your mind around that back in the day. True. Which Every is... movie after that, you're expecting it. But that first one, so that first one, when Matthew uh, Lillard goes and pulls out the uh, the voice modulator, and Ski Ulrich has already revealed he's the killer, people lost their freaking mind at that. <laughs> well, it's crazy because, to your point, yeah, now your brain is kind of conditioned to think there could potentially be more than one killer, but you know, you think about, you know, Freddy Krueger, one person. Uh, you know, Jason, one person. You know, Mike Myers, mm-hmm. one person. And, you know, obviously I know there's that one dumb Halloween where he has an apprentice, whatever, it doesn't fucking matter. Shut up. But but <laughs> it, but but most of the time it is just one person. So to your point, while I'm sitting there going, wait a minute, is there two? Oh my god, there is two. And it's a it's a very pleasant, I mean, as pleasant as this movie can be given the circumstances, but <laughs> But it's actually really cool because then it started making me think of I, I immediately thought of Hot Fuzz. I was like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any luck catching them killers yet? It's yeah. just one killer. Yeah, and I went, oh, god damn it. Okay, Edgar, right? And, and again, that's an influence directly from fucking Scream. I'm like, that's so cool. But um, I know I mentioned Nev Campbell earlier. So there is a purity to, to, to Nev Campbell's performance early on in the beginning when she He's thrown this ridiculous curveball, and I don't know about where this ends up as far as her family history because I haven't watched Scream Three yet. I everyone tells me that's where the honeymoon ends, so we'll we'll see. I'll get to it here at some point. But if I if I were you, just straight up, I would I watch three and uh, I'd watch four and five, and then maybe later down the line. Like, after you've taken a break, watch three and just try and think of it as like an independently uh, <laughs> done movie that isn't in the Scream series because it's nothing like the rest of them. Okay. Like, if, I... it was na- if it was named anything other than Scream, yeah. it would have been a decent movie. But because <laughs> of the diehard Scream fans, me being one of them, watching it going like, no, that's stupid. No, that's stupid. This is not what the Scream movies are supposed to be like. And there's plenty of reasons for why Scream 3 failed so badly. Like, legitimate reasons why it failed. Mostly because they had to rewrite the script in, like, 30 days. It's, like, an insane amount of time. Uh, like, completely redid the movie. But, in general, it is a just crap movie. Yeah, I, I I've definitely heard people uh, echo what uh, what you said, but um, I had no idea what happened with uh, Sydney's mom. Uh, that w- at least as far as what the movie tells us here, and when you find out what happened, it's like it's such a oh fuck seriously, like it's a dark fucking turn that it takes with her mom. That again in the nineties, I just don't think we we're getting shit like this. Like like when I think about stuff that kind of. <laughs> for lack of a better term term warped my brain as far as like shit that scared me i still remember that x-files episode home where i remember going oh i just want to curl in a ball and forget the world exists for like a year like i uh, you are outing yourself as an old ass man yeah, right? <laughs> i know it's like back back when they would ban things ban shit on tv <laughs> but 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 I remember watching that and going, oh, man, that really fucked me up. And as I was watching this, I just want to give Sydney a hug. Like, like no like no creepy ulterior motives attached. I was just like, girl, you're just going through the ringer. And I just, like, you just need to be held. Like, god damn it. Like, it it was actually making me angry how just every, there, there's a point where she's in the restroom and this 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 fucking preppy cheerleader kind oh, the comes bitches. out, and oh my god, I wanted to jump through that screen and just go, who fucking raised you? Because it's such a it's such a vile interaction that this cheerleader has with this girl talking about how you know Sydney's probably a sledge, just like her mom was. And you're just like, why? Like, what is this accomplishing? Why are you so to quote Taylor Swift? Why you got to be so mean? Like, it's just. <laughs> it's just but it, it it really does break your heart, and and 
Sydney uh, Neff Campbell gets that across so beautifully. And there are points where she needs to be vulnerable, vulnerable. She needs to be sad. And then there's these points later on uh, as the film reaches its climax where she gets pissed off. She gets angry. She's sick of being victimized. And you really root for her in a way that I was like sitting here watching going, yeah, Sydney, go ahead. I was like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm well, cheering for this movie. Fuck yeah. <laughs> through the five movies, her character, her character arc and just how her toughness and her resolve is incredible because the first movie she's absolutely a victim and at the end of the movie i mean she she doesn't die she kills the two killers but like you wouldn't say she's a badass or anything necessarily by like number five she's full-blown like do not fuck with sydney prescott (laughs) yeah it it, it really actually kind of uh reminded me of the latest uh uh tomb raider uh trilogy of games where it's like okay the first one is Laura kind of getting her ass kicked and you going oh man like she just kind of wants to you know explore tombs and find random rocks and shit <laughs> but then you get to you know the second one she's a full-on like she's very confident in herself and when we get to scream 2 we'll talk about that more but getting to the other characters in this I, okay so i will be the first to admit because we're both wrestling fans i i watched a documentary you cannot kill david arquette um that reviews up on the channel now by the way people I, i'm such a fan of his just off his wrestling alone and for what he was willing to put his body through like that that takes a, a brass set what he's done just as an indie wrestler and i give him all the credit in the world but yeah uh, shout out nick gage yeah 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 good good job nick you almost, <laughs> you almost killed david arquette but but between but between that and then he is such a He's really charming in this. And I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting it. Like, I was not expecting David Arquette to kind of hit for me the way he did. Because yeah, as a person, he's kind of a goofball. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good way of putting it. That's the nice way of putting it. Yeah, he's a bit of a goober. But, I mean, but he seems like a nice guy, though. Like, at worst, he seems like a nice guy. And yeah. But it was actually really cool to see him playing uh, this, you know, Dep- Deputy Dewey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whenever I hear the word Dewey, I just immediately think Dewey Cox. I just start laughing. But... But seeing David Arquette in this role, it's it's interesting how he's trying to prove himself and not be a joke. And it's kind of like those, it's kind of like how kids are like, you know, we're going to start a kid's detective agency and then shit gets real and they're like, oh, fuck, we didn't need, you know, we need this much control. <laughs> like, it's, it's fascinating how he's thrown into the fire in that way with this serial killer who, you know, as we mentioned earlier, kind of starts off as a oh, it was one murder, you know, it's fine, whatever. And then, you know, that shit hits the high school and you go, oh, there's, this is bad. We all need to actually be fucking concerned. And there's a level of panic that Dewey's kind of always in as far as wanting to protect uh, protect Sydney. I really appreciate that level of gravitas that Arquette brings to it. And, uh, a bit of a spoiler for Scream 2. Straight up, he might be my favorite character outside of Sydney in the second one. I, I think it's actually... Oh, God, I can't believe I'm saying this. It's, it's bordering on uh, on award-worthy as far as Arquette's performance in Scream 2. Like, I was shocked at how much I loved Arquette in Scream 2. But, so, um, in, in general, I am not a David Arquette fan of him as an actor. Me neither. <laughs> in these movies, he's actually really acts and is he's not just most david arquette movies you're just like oh that's david arquette playing david arquette being a goober this movie he's playing a role in these in the series and he nails it every single one of them yeah i i, I was genuinely impressed and I, yeah i was like son of a bitch man okay like you know credit words do um okay little so- little known little little fact i'm gonna drop uh as well yeah uh or the original copy of Scream that was the tester that aired out in that was aired. Uh, Dewey dies. The uh, crowd crowds disliked it so much that Wes Craven decided to change his mind. Really? Yes. Interesting. Okay. Um, I actually really like that because yeah, it, it would have felt it, it would have felt bad to actually kill him in here because that is one thing I will say about this movie too. Uh, 
man, don't get attached to people because it's nope. like, cause, yeah, it was, I was like, God, am I watching Game of Thrones? Holy shit. Like, anytime I was like, oh, you might be cool. Oh, I should probably not get attached. <laughs> you should I? Because without spoiling, without spoiling a, uh, a whole lot in the series for anyone who might watch later, two, th- two things going into any screen movies. One, don't get attached to anyone, and two, if it, there's a new character, they'll be the killer. Yeah, fair. I um, oh, what's his name? Is uh, um Harry Winkler is in this one? Was Henry fr- Henry Winkler, <laughs> the Fonz, yeah, the, the Fonz. Um, of course he's on Barry now. And if you have not watched Barry, people, please watch Barry. He's fucking incredible on there. Um, I was so happy to see him. And one thing I actually, and I mean, love about this movie is that you're getting deaths in the daytime. And that's something that, again... Doesn't happen. Yeah, like, it really doesn't it. happen at all very often. So to actually... Because, you know, the whole con- the whole horror conceit is, oh, you know, it's daytime, I'm safe. And there are several kills that happen in daytime, and every daytime kill is actually probably more brutal than the nighttime ones. I was like, oh my god, because when, when the Fonz gets it, he fucking uh, gets it in a way. I was like, "Oh, what the fuck? No!" And it, it's it it and, and Wes Craven because he because he was a brilliant son of a bitch. He was he was very great at just teasing the tension, fucking with the camera just a little bit, and you're just kind of like in that you know it's like you're playing Arkham like like an Arkham game. You're like, okay, why why is my blood pressure raising? Oh God, what did you do? And then Ghostface, you're like, God damn, like the the, the scene and, I did, and this and the score too. The score excellent. just fucked with you. Yeah, who did the score on this? I do not know. I really? know the soundtracks. I don't know the scores. Okay, they, they didn't too. release the actual score until like twenty, like twenty, like twenty twenty, when they released them all on vinyl. I I don't recall the name of the uh, composer, but it is the same oh, composer for all the movies. Him. Okay, so Marco uh, Beltrami uh, yes. is the one who did the score. So he's done uh, quite a few things I like, actually. So he did the score for uh, for Blade Two, which which kicks fucking ass. Uh, did the score for for, uh, for Ford v Ferrari. Did the score for the Three Ten to Yuma uh, remake, and then Screams One, Two, Three, and Four. Um, Man, he said a lot of shit I actually like. Did the score for Logan? God damn. Uh, Wolverine? And, and, Fuck, and the, okay. The score for the Scream movies is just done so well because it's just it has you on edge when you hear that score because you know something is around the corner when when you've got no music and just that little background, that little background score. Like, okay, someone's going to get it. <laughs> Yeah, and I and I have to give this movie a ton of credit for or for something else. Uh, I am not a fan of Jamie Kennedy unless he's rolling with Saget for the most part, or if he Night Michelle. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. R.I.P. Bob Saget, and or if he's oh, uh, you know, in Malibu and he's wanted the most. <laughs> but outside of that, outside of that, I could give a shit about Jamie Kennedy. I remember when the Jamie Kennedy experiment was on, I was like, God, I don't think this guy's funny at all. Like, you mean just, less funny punked? I actually, wow, yeah, actually, you're exactly right, aren't you? But yeah, I just, I, Jamie Kennedy's never done it for me. I've never liked him. It is an incredible feat that they actually made me like Randy in these movies. I was like, wow, I'm Wes Craven. You're a, I didn't know you're a sorcerer, too. Because... Well, I, I think what's likable about Jamie Kennedy in the in these movies, specifically the first one, is if you're watching these movies, uh, you're probably someone who's really into movies and Randy's way into horror movies. So you just instantly relate to him and hope well, I hope he's not the killer, and I also hope he doesn't get killed. Yeah, and, and I will be the first to admit, I was definitely, like, projecting, phrasing, uh, <laughs> onto Jamie Kennedy, phrasing, um, in that way. Because it's like, okay, he's bringing down these, you know, very classic horror tropes, but the movies also, like, inform you, like, yeah, these are the rules, like, in theory, but are we going to abide by them? Maybe we will, maybe we will. Like you, you know, it, it's it's very clever in the way that's done. Um, I yeah, did... H- Hunter, I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Okay.
Oh, damn it. I'm so sad. <laughs> it's fine. Um, yeah, I, I, I adored him in the movie. Like, I thought he did a great job. One thing that really did actually <laughs> catch me off guard. So, I mean, Ghostface is killing people. Honestly, Ghostface sucks just off that alone. But Ghostface, there's nothing worse than knowing you're going to get killed and someone's talking shit to you, like, right before they're going to do it. Because some of the lines Ghostface has in here, I went, wow, you're a fucking asshole. He, there's, so he, of course, ends up calling, uh, ends up calling, uh, Sydney. And, you know, Sydney plays it off like, yeah, bullshit, this is you. And just from fucking nowhere, he goes, you know, if you hang up on me, you'll die just like your mother. And I, and I pulled a black person like a motherfucker. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like, what is your problem? But he's doing shit like that constantly. And so a lot, a lot of the uh, theories is uh, the phone calls being made uh, uh, before any killings happen is Billy, uh, Skeet Ulrich character, doing the calls because Billy's the psychopath of the two. Stu is just someone who falls to peer pressure and is doing what his friend does, which is way fucked up and like still speaks volumes that that could happen to this day. But Billy is the true, like complete nutbag unhinged character. So every time like hmm, they okay. call during K- the call uh, to Casey, the call to uh, the call to Sydney when she's at her house, uh, those are clearly Billy because he just snaps during those calls. Yeah, that that actually that's interesting. That actually makes a ton of sense because there is this gear that Ghostface does hit when he's getting pissed. And you're like, oh wow, this was funny for half a second, and the shit just got really dark really quick. And it's actually fat. That's a really fast. And, I mean, that does hold up with how the way the movie presents itself. Uh, a- a- another fun part of the screen movies, like once you've watched them and like you want to go and rewatch them, uh, try and like pick out like. So obviously, the majority of the screen movies have two killers. So like you can watch and be like, okay, maybe this scene was this killer, and that scene's that killer, and it's just fun to speculate. Some of it is only ever going to be speculation and some of it is just like oh that makes no logistical sense for him to be here because he was there at this point so that's clearly the other killer but it's that's one of the things i enjoy watching and you can always catch new little things like that when you rewatch for the next few times Hmm, that, that's good to know um so going through just a few more things here so i so uh we haven't mentioned gail yet uh who's played uh gail weathers who's of course played by courtney cox <coughs> i think i think it's fun um oh I'm, I'm sorry you have a cough there <laughs> yes so i apologize um dry throat right yeah it happens uh so it's really funny courtney cox like so back in the 90s when everyone was like oh my god jennifer anson's so hot on friends and courtney cox too Neither one of them ever did anything for me. I was just like, yeah, whatever. Um, I think Courtney Cox has aged like a fine wine. Uh, I I think I was one of the few people who watched that show Dirt that was on FX. Like when FX was first getting started, I really liked that show. And I enjoyed Cougar Town quite a bit. But it was actually really cool to see Courtney Cox play a character with a mean streak because Gail is such a cunt. Like he's a cunt in a way that... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that there'd be a tornado, you know, and you hear people screaming as their house is getting destroyed. She's like, no, no, get closer, get closer. And and her cameraman, Kenny the cameraman, who's played by W. Earl Brown, the way Ghostface gets him was something <laughs> I went, damn. Like, like you you would have felt you would have thought Kenny the Kenny the cameraman kicked Ghostface's dog or something like that. Cause that that kill felt in particularly personal yeah and he I, did kenny dirty like really dirty like in a way that i genuinely wasn't expecting and i think uh, to your point talking about you know how uh how we have two killers i love the fact that as the kills kind of go on they do it, it almost feels like not like ghostface wants to get caught but he's almost like insulted that he's not being taken as a bigger threat and so those kills do feel way more intense and this is coming from the first kill where casey's like fucking hung up and shit and you're like oh my fucking god um 
actual, actual, actually, uh, the first kill was actually Casey's boyfriend. So. Oh, you're right. Fair enough. And, All and, right. te and technically, even though it wasn't on screen, the first kill was Sydney's mom. Rain. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, point Dexter. <laughs> but N not not that I care or know anything about these movies. Right no, 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 no. Nope, that is, nope, nope, that is completely fair. But but Gail in particular, for the way that she's willing to, and I think that's the part, or that's one of the themes for me that sucks. And I mean, this is a compliment because the way that I mean, God, we look at the media cycle now and how you know the twenty four hour news cycle is one of the worst things that's happened. Actually, when we, when we backtrack, it is the worst thing that's happened to, to journalism because everything is, you know, sensationalized to such a degree. And Gail is like the personification of that. And it's really interesting that this Kim came, came, came out in, you know, 96 and 26 years later, it's still, it's still relevant. And it's actually depressing as fuck when you think about it. And when you see how Gail is willing to use Sydney's mother's memory. Uh, she, I mean, fuck, she writes a book on her, you know? <laughs> and you're just like, wow, that is just, that's fucking grim as hell. And the way that, at a point, Sydney just decks her, uh, first off, justified as fuck, by the way. <laughs> um, but the way that Gail's like, if I'm not, if I didn't do this, someone else would. I went. That is like the most insane, like line of logic that you can. Cause you can use that shit for anything. Like, oh man, I was, I was gonna rob this bank. Someone else would have. <laughs> like, <laughs> but we, yeah, we are not advocators of violence, but no, no, no. Uh, but the uh, the first punch, and it is not the last one, but the first punch Sydney throws at uh throws at gale so satisfying oh yeah it's it's i i definitely stood up like it, man I, i'm not gonna lie i freaked out like when uh david blaine does magic in front of black people <laughs> i was like ah! I was like yeah but, but uh as far as the kills since we're talking about the kills so rose mcgowan who god <laughs> breaks my I, I used to love rose mcgowan and then she went nuts just shame but uh she plays T uh, tatum in this movie and Man, her kill is just her kill so sucks. Good. Her kill so fucking good. sucks. Like it is one of those kills where you go, like I'm not gonna lie, dude. I definitely looked at my garage door a little closer the other day. I was like, <laughs> I was like, uh. <laughs> was like, yeah, that's let's clarify. It sucked that her character died. The way she got killed was fucking awesome. Oh yeah, no the 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 cleverness of the kill, admittedly, and that's the thing about Ghostface, like it. It feels like that old uh, Punisher game that you that, that was like on Xbox, where you could just kill criminals in like the most vile, vile ways humanly possible. Like it felt like Ghost Killer just, uh, or Ghostface, Ghostface Killer being in this would have been great. But it, it, but it, it's interesting how Ghostface is like, oh man, I I could stab you. Like I'm gonna stab you, but let's make this fun for me too because <laughs> because Tatum, it, it, almost almost like he's getting bored of using a knife and sometimes yeah. he has to do something else like he has a knife there obviously if he's in a pinch you know but it's like <laughs> oh can i can i use my environment can i use the environment to kill you in a way more gruesome way kind, um, kind of like the uh friday the 13th uh video game for ps4 or switch and all that yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, like i could kill you with my bare hands but there's some stuff around here that will make it even more gruesome um we i know we're not reviewing screen too but there's a point where Ghostface just throws this person off a roof and I went, wow, that fucking sucks. Like, it wasn't clever, but he's just like, <laughs> he's like, yep, I'm over you. Like, whoop, there, there you go. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, getting to the kind of the reveal of the killers, I mean, we already talked about it with, uh, uh, with uh, Stuart, who's played by Matthew Lillard, who I Ooh. gotta say, uh, my God, I didn't know. Like, cause, you know, when I think of Matthew Will, I think of fucking Shaggy, you know? I think of Shaggy or I think of, like, uh, you know, I, the descendants. I, or... I think SLC Punk. Fair. The curve. Yeah. Or, uh, or uh, without a paddle, you know, that yeah. classic. Uh... Or, or the epic dance scene and she is all that. I, yeah, actually, that is pretty epic. But, but to see, I didn't know he had this gear. And I just have to say, bravo, sir. Like, like straight up, just bra fucking vo. Because when he's laying out, you know, why they, why they did this shit, it's, yeah, it, he, he takes it up next level so fucking well. Because the whole movie, he's just this goofball friend. So when it, you find out it's him, it's like, holy fuck, that's, 
this guy's a sociopath. And the and the reason for why they did it, you're like, oh god, really? Like this is why? And- well, not not they. The reason why, I mean, there is a lot of lore online about Stu being gay for Billy and Stu just doing it because Billy told him to. Yeah. But there's also a lot of people believe that Stu Stu just did it out of peer pressure, which is even more horrifying. And, and it feels like the movie kind of leans more into, into into the latter as far as like the reasonings behind it. I think you could argue the gay element being there, but just in the in the remorse that he shows, like, oh my parents are gonna be happy about this. No, like my that- parents are gonna be so Oh, man. Wait, wait, can, wait. Can I throw in a little fact? Oh, yeah, please. I, I, I'll, I'll wrap up. When we wrap up, I'll uh, tell you some, like, little uh, little tidbits. But uh, since we're talking about Stu, uh, the scene uh, where he where he's sitting down because he's woozy because uh, Bill, him and Billy stabbed each other. Yeah. Uh, Skeet Ulrich. This is completely improvised. Skeet Ulrich throws the phone and it hits Matthew Lillard, which wasn't supposed to happen. And Matthew Lillard improvised, you hit me with the phone, you dick. <laughs> okay, that's great. <laughs> okay, I actually love that scene even more now. But uh, but the way that scene plays out is just, it's so haunting and it's so fucking cool. And it really does put the exclamation point on Sydney as a character. And honestly, makes you want to see more, makes you want to see more. Or of her um i'm gonna though throw a couple know, though you know killings are coming if she's there yeah and that's actually so as we kind of wrap up here i want to throw out a, f- uh, a few more things here so one thing uh i we mentioned it earlier the whole scene with that uh cunty t uh that cunty cheerleader in the bathroom that's not even uh that leads to an awesome Sydney's face interaction, which I was not expecting. I went, wait, what? He's at the school? And then you kind of go, oh shit, he's at the school. During but, the day. Yeah, but that whole interaction kicks so much ass. And it's not even 30 minutes into the movie, which is almost two hours, keep in mind. It's like an hour, 51 minutes. But not even 30 minutes into the movie, we get Ghostface for Sydney face-to-face. And it's it's so cool that we get it that early on. And it kind of rings like a very much like a boxing uh, like a like a boxing fight. Uh, you know, you just get little bits of them here and there until you get to the to the very end. And it works so well for how they space. Uh, how they space everything out. Um, her her boyfriend Billy, uh, Billy, right? Yes. Um, he has this line that I I I laughed at, but I laughed at because it's the literal textbook definition of gaslighting. He goes, no. I, I have a girlfriend who'd rather accuse me of murder than touch me. And I went, oh, fuck off, dude. Like I, <laughs> like, I, like, I said that so quick without even thinking about it. And as soon as he said that shit, I went, oh, yeah, that's something only a vile piece of shit would make that comparison to given her emotional state where she's confiding in this motherfucker. I went, okay, so you're definitely a killer. Like, cool. Like, as soon as he said that, I went, oh, yeah, I was already, like, 99% there. Like, if I, if I was playing fucking Carmen San Diego, I'd accuse this motherfucker. But, <laughs> but when he said that yeah, line, if, I was like, if, yep. if I were playing Among Us, he'd be kicked out, out of the space, <laughs> out of the space station. Exactly. I was like, oh, yeah, fuck you, dude. But that that scene in particular is just, is, is fucking heartbreaking. Um, there's a moment at the 53 minute and 29 second mark, and I timestamped that specifically, where uh, where Winkler, uh, the principal, gets killed, and there's this amazing shot of Ghostface and his pupil that I just went, oh, Wes Craven. I, I, like, I'm not gonna lie, I went, if I could get like a little like mini poster of that, I would, I would hang that shit up. Like, it's such a cool shot. It's actually, I could say, one of my favorite uh shots in a horror movie period like i i love that shot so much and um um the other thing i want to point out there's a point where they're showing a um oh what's her name gail sneaks this camera in to this house yeah and it's on a 30 second delay in that 30 second delay the note i literally have here says 30 second delay ghost face god <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and I won't say where it happens, but when it does, it's it's mwah, it's chef's kiss. It's so fucking great. 
Um, there's a death of a TV in here, which I didn't know I needed, but I was like, yep, love that too. Bravo, Wes Craven, <laughs> you're great at this shit. And the last thing I'll say before I throw it back to you to kind of wrap up and give your final thoughts. There's a point where uh, Sydney's trying to go ahead and get away. And Ghostface has these keys. Oh, and, way, and he just jingles them in front the of her. He like just a dangles, dick. He dangles her, dangles them in front of her. I think, I, wait, what's my actual? Oh, yeah. This is my actual note. Ghostface dangling the keys in front of Sydney is such a dick move. Like <laughs> but the way he does it, like you keep, he's not even fucking smiling because of fucking mask, but you don't see him you smiling. Could tell like, that, yeah, you could tell that Matthew Lillard's under that mask, just smiling ear to ear. Yeah, and just taking so much glee in her misfortune. Like I oh my god, that scene is <laughs> just but yeah, dude, I'm gonna throw it back to you, man. Uh, if you want to go over a couple more things that, uh, if we haven't mentioned anything that you really want to get into, well, I would just like to say uh, mention some Easter eggs, mostly for you to know. But anyone that listen that's listening that's seen the movie, if they don't don't know these facts, might be interested. So uh, Drew Barrymore read for the part of Nev Campbell and got it. Uh, was asked to read for the part and uh, Wes Craven wanted to give it to her and she said no give me a small role and have me die in the first uh give me the casey role because people seeing me get like all you most of your actors are all younger people who no one knows people know me it will be a big twist if i die in the first scene interesting uh oh. henry, huh. henry winkler was uh was supposed to have a much larger role. He was supposed to be on the cover when they released the poster of the movie. And Henry Winkler said, shorten my role and don't put me on the poster. And when Wes Craven said, why wouldn't you want to be on the poster? He said, listen, this movie is about younger kids. If you put me on the poster for a movie, you're not going to attract younger kids to come see this movie. Damn. Uh also, also a little thing. Uh, so the scene right before Henry Winkler gets killed, when he hears a noise and goes out into the hallway and sees the janitor, yeah, that is Wes Craven. And if you pay attention, he's wearing the Freddy Krueger uh, st- uh, green and uh, red striped sweater. So I actually did catch that. That is actually a note I have. I do have that one. Th- those are the biggest Easter egg note or like unknown facts about Scream. The first one, now, I could probably think of more, but those are all the ones that I thought were really interesting. Because, like, imagine, ne- like, Drew Barrymore stars as Nev Campbell, and Henry Winkler's got a much bigger role. That movie wouldn't be anywhere close to as impactful as it was. I mean, I think it's fascinating to think of, like, a what-if world where that, you know, where that happens, because... Yeah, when I think about how this film was constructed, um, I gotta say, too, the pacing on this movie kicks so much ass. I never felt like this movie was dragging. I was never bored. I was just like, yep, this is just everything I want. I'm having, I don't want to say fun, but kind of having fun because, like, you know, the, the, the deaths in here are pretty fucked. Like, and I mean that as a compliment, but. As you see Sydney kind of starting to put the pieces together, and as you, the audience, starts to put the pieces together and kind of get to the climax, it so really. D- I don't go- consider myself like a crazy or a psycho person, like necessarily. I'd say I'm not, I wouldn't go as far as to say I'm normal. There's something about these movies that to me is just fun and amps me up, and I know that's not right. <laughs> but I, I not that, that I'm cheering Ghostface or anything, but there are some parts where I'm just like, Okay, I saw what Ghostface just did there. That ruled. Yeah, no, Ghostface has some like. There's some clever shit Co- Ghostface does. That it's like, okay, this is only something that someone truly sick would be able to probably put, you know, put together. Um, so the right on this is Kevin Williamson, who has a fascinating <laughs> um, uh, filmography. filmography. So. Yeah. So yeah, he uh, he was an executive producer and writer on Dawson's Creek. Uh, he was a writer and executive producer on The Vampire Diaries. Uh, he wrote Scream, Scream Two, I Know What You Did Last Summer, The Faculty, which kicks so much ass. Um, another Nev Campbell starring film in a uh, Teaching Mrs. Tingle, which I fucking adore. Teaching oh, Mrs. That, Tingle, that's like, a good movie. That, like that, that's so much fucking fun. I, I forgot about that one. 
Yeah, and then she uh, he did uh, Cursed with uh, Christina Ricci, which I really like Cursed too. Um, and then uh, he did was an executive producer on the latest uh, Scream, and will be an executive producer on uh, Scream Six coming out next year. But I, I thought he also did Scream Four. Uh, yes, I he think. was a screenwriter and producer on Scream Four as well. Okay, that's so. Without going off on a huge tangent, because we're gonna wrap up soon. Scream 1, 2, 4, and 5 have a very organic feel because even though Wes Craven only directed 1, 2, and 4, Kevin Williamson wrote 1, 2, 4, and 5, and there was a complete different writer on 3. So it just 1, 2, 4, and 5 just feel way more organic and like they actually all go together and follow the same basic formula while number three just number three basically is the difference between like between like mad max or road or uh mad max or the road warrior and then watching fury road right after okay not in a good way okay um yeah i'm I'm curious to get three because i know some people have even told me like i've softened on three a little bit but the people i know who hate three despise three so i'm very i'm very curious to watch it because yeah um but... it is the worst it is the worst killer reveal you will see in the entire series you will throw your arms up in the air and go what the actual fuck <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know who the killer is either, so I'm really curious to get into it. But uh, get, get, getting the final thoughts here, um, one thing I've talked about on the show for, the uh, oh God, how long, six years I've been doing this, is how incredibly frustrating it is when your time is being wasted. Because, I mean, look, money's money. You know, I have to waste my money sometimes on seeing, you know, dumb shit. It, it's part of the part of the gig but i'm always so happy when someone recommends something to me and i love it in the degree that they're hoping that i do and and buck was buck was like not pushy or like dickish about it he's like dude i really enjoy these movies i think you'd enjoy them too and i gotta be honest y'all um not only do i love the first screen I love Scream 2, too. I might love Scream 2 more just because of the killer's reason, but that I'll save that for the, the uh, our actual Scream 2 review. But this I'll is... agree with... Uh, I also agree with you, though it is an unpopular opinion. Uh, te- uh, technically, Scream 2 did better on like IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes, but like most diehards say that like Scream 1 was the formula. It's kind of like... Scream 2 was a cover, even though it might be a better cover, you, the, you have to give props to the original Scream 1 because it's the original, but I love 2, and uh, we can spend hours on the next one getting into Scream 2 because the, my love for that movie is unmatched. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll definitely get into that uh, for for the second review. But this is something that I was so happy I watched this. Like I was so happy I watched this and finally made the time uh, and the point to watch this movie. I, I just I had a blast watching it. I think Nev Campbell. Um, you it, want to tell everyone my voodoo password? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, I just. Make it make a point to watch this. Like, if you haven't watched this for some reason, and look, y'all, I've talked about the fact that I'm not a big horror guy. Like, I just don't like being scared. What, you know, what do you want from me? But, but uh, Wait, oh, an African American man who doesn't like being scared—that's that, right? unheard of. I know, right? I know. Like, white. I don't have a great history of white masks, but that's a whole other podcast. But I, I got to give Wes Craven a ton of credit. Um. The jump scares in this. There are multiple jump scares. I was like, oh, Wes Craven, you mother. Like, especially in Scream 2. Scream 2 is really bad. Where I just, where, you know, you're almost expecting that cat to jump out. Like, ah, motherfucker. But, but Wes Craven did a great job with jump scares and they're actually fun. Like, I I found myself actually going, oh, oh, Wes, you, you cheeky bugger, you. But this was just a joy to watch. You know, not like, you know, I was super happy after it ended, but, but, but you're was, happy that you watched them. Exactly. Like, I was enthralled. I was engaged. Uh, as I mentioned, this is almost two hours. It fucking flies by. I, I never felt um, the length, phrasing, of the movie. I think Nev Campbell is genuinely transcendent in this movie. I, I think this is an incredible starring role uh, for her. And it 
actually makes me even more upset that he's not back for Scream 6, considering how great he is I in this could one, do but... an hour-long podcast about how long, how upset that makes me. Yeah, but that's a whole other thing. Just, just fucking pay her. Like, like, seriously, come on. Like, it, she is a goddamn... Anyways, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah I, I, I could go on the whole thing, but... I was so happy. I'm so happy this movie exists. I'm so happy it's a movie that's still being studied and still influencing people. Um, I'm happy the last screen did well so well that they're doing a six one again, Perry Neff Campbell. But I, I, I'm just happy this is a thing. And I'm so happy I finally watched this. Uh this is a fan fucking tastic. Uh I, yeah, I, I genuinely I'm sitting here trying to think of a complaint and I I don't really have one. Um for the first two, there's nothing really I mean, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you just aren't all that bright. Yeah, I, I just I was thrilled watching this movie. And, and I, I have been a Scream fan since like they came out in the nineties. And I have to say, every time they release a movie, I'm reluctant. And with the exception of Scream 3, every time they release a movie, I see it in theaters, and I am the happiest person leaving that movie theater. I'm also always terrified to be in the movie theater, but we will talk about that during the Scream 2 review. Yeah, we'll get we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, but I'm assuming your grade is also a fan of fucking Tastic, I'm assuming? I what? I'm assuming your grade is also a fan of fucking Tastic, I'm assuming? For two? Uh, uh, for uh, for Scream. That's our original. OG. Oh, 100%. A+. Plus. Perfect. Yeah. I, I just watched this movie. Like, if you haven't seen this for some reason. So I watched this on, uh, I watched this on, uh, uh on Voodoo. Uh, thank you, Buck. Um, but I was able to watch Scream 2 on, uh, Paramount Plus, And I think, I think most of them are on there. So check Paramount Plus if you have it. But if not, just pay the three bucks and fucking you know, fucking rent it or buy it. Buy, buy buy it on Blu-ray. Be like me. Get the steel book. Get the get the 4K. Get every version there's out. If it were on Betamax, I'd probably buy it there too. <laughs> I mean, that's that's fair. I I will I will say I don't go super crazy on. I'm I'm more of a Christmas guy. I, I've talked about this on the show, but I do like to watch. Uh, there are certain horror movies I like to watch each year. So like I I've watched the. Uh, I've done my rewatch of Halloween, uh, OG Halloween. I rewatched the 2018. Uh, watch Paranorman. Watch Monster House because those movies kick ass. Uh, watch do, the. Do you watch Stay Alive or or See No Evil? Because uh, those I are as not, good as it gets. Gosh damn, I am not watching either of those. Uh, I did watch The Birds uh, for the first time in a while because I'm not gonna lie, man. Uh, quick, uh, quick segue here, uh, everyone, but. Uh, we went to middle school together, and dude, I the birds make me think of those fucking seagulls from Judkins, and I'm just like, oh my fucking, like, like that shit. Okay, <laughs> so this is gonna sound real weird. Ghostface, not really scared by him, more intrigued, and like, and it's like, oh yeah, he's just interesting. Like, I want to know what is inside that mind. Birds? No, I don't fuck with birds. I ain't watching this movie. <laughs> Yeah, no, the birds is legit horrifying. Like, the concept that a giant flock of birds could just make you flee your own home is, like, a terrifying concept. Like, it's it's kind of nuts. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to be adding these to my yearly Halloween uh, rotation. I'm going to probably wait till Black Friday because I was waiting for the, the steel books and they're out of stock. But I will be buying the steel book for, for Scream 1 and 2. Like, I... Or the I, box, or buy the box set when it comes out. That should be dropping in December. Not, not that I've got it in my wish list or anything yeah, for no, anyone no. that wants to get me a birthday or a Christmas gift. Or anything. <laughs> wink, wink, wink. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, y'all, th- this was just. I'm so happy I finally sat down and watched this, and I look forward to watching this again uh, next year. Cause fuck yeah, I had a blast with this. But, um. Everyone, Scream. Uh, what is your favorite Scream movie, people? Uh, let, let us know in the comments. That's something I would love to actually get people's opinion uh, opinions and, on. And what's your least favorite Scream movie, and why is it number three? <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was like, I, I was like, this is a wind up. I know where he's going with this, but uh, but Buck, dude, thank you so much for being on. We'll do this again for Scream Two uh, here before the end of the month. But um, 
yeah, dude, thank you so much for being on, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And more importantly, thank you for just without, like, without me having to, like, really pitch these. Thank you for just watching them and being like, hey, going out of your way to be like, all right, you've said these are great. I'm going to watch it. And you watch with an open mind. And I have, I'm not even going to lie, when you were, like, messaging me your live reaction it was like it brought me, me so much joy it was like okay he gets it like this is why this is why we're good friends because you get what is good about this because if you would have came back and been like i didn't really care for that it would have borderline broke my heart <laughs> yeah i i'll be real man i was going in this being like oh man i hope this is a good <laughs> fucking saying it is and and i'll be real this is a rare case where you actually undersold something and i'm actually happy you did because i you know i i know we're gonna review scream 2 but my god i have so much to say about scream 2 i i think that's gonna be even more fun than this review well was, it, it it was no uh black knight or pootie tang true. but it was what pretty is? good <laughs> and anyone that wants to watch it's not quite as good as the Black Knight with Martin Lawrence, but it's still pretty good. Yeah, it's no Wild Hogs, but you know what are you gonna what are you gonna do? <laughs> but honestly, what is? <laughs> yes, what is Wild Hogs? But um, everyone, let us know your favorite screen movie uh, in the comments. Let us know your least favorite. Uh, you can follow yours truly on the Twitter at J Hunter Real Pineapple. You can follow. Uh, the podcasts, most places you listen to podcasts, uh, SoundCloud, Apple, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, Tune Up, and Samsung Podcasts at The Real Pineapple. You can like both our pages on Facebook at The Real Pineapple. That's R E E L Pineapple and Real Pineapple Games. And you can follow yours truly on Letterboxd at Black Shazam. And you can follow me on TikTok at Black Shazam 775. Um, we were going to review all six of these, but I'm actually going to be moving here in a couple of weeks. So we're going to have a review for Screams 1 through 3. At some point, we'll go back and do 4, 5, and 6. But uh, Buck, again, dude, thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate it, man. Uh, we will talk Scream 2 uh, here soon. But everyone, thank you so much for your support, y'all. Please stay safe out there, and we will talk to you soon. Uh, and, and also, don't follow me on social media. It's lame. Noted. <laughs> Have a good night, y'all.